On April 5th, Conor McGregor and a private jet load of pals flew from Dublin to New York. The result of this decision? Chaos and mayhem visited upon a parking garage in the bowels of the Barclays Center. People injured and hospitalized. Bouts lost from UFC 223. Felony charges filed. Conor McGregor arrested and taken into police custody. They say McGregor sought retribution for the mistreatment of his friend and longtime training partner Artem Lobov at the hands of Khabib Nurmagomedov and his crew. Wrong. If you want to know the actual reason Connor flew to New York on that fateful day, stick around. Hello, I'm Kavassier the Goddamn Newt. Why does this matter? That's what some will ask. We all saw Khabib and his band of weird beards bully and slap Artem around a little, which obviously resulted in McGregor flying into Avengers' friend's honor. Things got a little out of hand with the hand truck, but essentially that's that. End of story. Fine, believe what you will. But without an appreciation of what actually motivates Conor McGregor, you won't understand a damn thing leading up to McGregor vs. Khabib at UFC 229. Otherwise, intelligent analysts are already grasping about in the dark because they've accepted an all-too-easy narrative rather than questioning things for themselves. If McGregor loses, in my opinion, he will retire. Khabib's going to take him down and maul him or... McGregor is going to catch him on the way in and knock him out. Conor McGregor got on that plane from New York with one thing in mind, to inflame public interest in seeing him return to the octagon and making them believe anything else would be a disappointment. After Maymac, Conor's original plan was to return to the UFC before the end of 2017. That wasn't hype or wishful thinking on Dana White's part. McGregor wanted one more payday before the end of the year to count towards the Forbes magazine top paid athletes of the year list. Strange, but that's the kind of thing that motivates McGregor. Once he learned Forbes counted from July through June, not January through December, he recalibrated and eyed a comeback in March. McGregor and his coach John Cavanaugh hyped the idea of a St. Paddy's Day card in Boston or at MSG. By early January, photos and stories surfaced showing McGregor was back to training in earnest. Depending on who you ask, Mayweather vs. McGregor was the number one or number two best-selling pay-per-view of all time. The downside of McGregor generating so much money for himself and all involved was he would need a new contract before he could return to the UFC. Dan White admitted as much. Connor believed he held enough leverage to get the deal he wanted without much issue. After all, he generated more money for the UFC in a single appearance in 2017 than the entire roster did over 12 pay-per-views. But Dana White believed the UFC had a few fighters on the cups of greatness, so they could afford to slow play negotiations with McGregor. Guys like Max Holloway, Cody Garbrandt, and especially Francis Ngannou all seem poised to become pay-per-view stars for the UFC. This is the main reason Dana felt comfortable freezing Conor out by booking interim champ Ferguson vs. Habib at UFC 223, with the idea of stripping McGregor's belt once the two were actually in the octagon. Funny thing about the plans of mice and men. Conor McGregor was the biggest winner at UFC 220, and Ngannou win against Stipe with a strong promotional push, and you likely have a budding superstar. Ngannou didn't work out for the UFC, then another egg failed to hatch when Max Holloway dropped out of UFC 222 with a leg injury. McGregor offered to step in against Frankie Edgar and save the card. Conor was training and ready. A late notice fight would mean fewer media obligations for McGregor while also he would get to play the role of the hero. Dana said no. The official reason? Not enough time to properly promote, but likely the UFC wasn't ready to give in to Conor's contract demands. They were still counting on the winner of Ferguson vs. Khabib being seen as the legitimate 155-pound champ, which would have greatly limited McGregor's negotiation power. On April 1st, one week from UFC 223, Dana White announced Tony Ferguson was out. At the same time, he announced Max Holloway would fill in against Khabib. This didn't make much sense. Even though the matchup of Khabib vs. Max sounded awesome, Holloway had just pulled out of UFC 222 with a bum leg. So how was he going to be in shape and make weight on short notice, especially against a grinder like Khabib? McGregor should have been the obvious choice. Connor believed his career would cross paths with Khabib since at least early 2015, which was before he beat Eldo for the 145-pound belt, even before he beat Chad Mendez on late notice for the interim belt, and long before Khabib even sniffed a main event. Who exactly are you going to go up and take the belt from at 155? Whoever has it. Whoever has it. Khabib will get the lightweight belt. To avoid using McGregor as the fill-in, Dana needed someone with an impeccable resume. The fact Max Holloway also held the 145-pound belt would lend credibility. After all, Conor McGregor and Tony Ferguson already held lightweight belts. A third belt in the division would struggle for legitimacy. 
Connor may indeed see things, but it doesn't take a mystic to recognize that Holloway had just pulled out of his main event a few weeks earlier because of a bad wheel and is known to have a tough weight cut, and Khabib pulls out with such regularity they call him the rhythm method. Clearly, there was a damn good chance one of them wouldn't make it to the octagon on Saturday night. Tuesday, April 3rd, Khabib and his lackeys find Artem alone in the hotel hallway and punk him. This was never about Khabib setting Artem straight. It was Khabib raising the stakes against Conor McGregor in an attempt to get the Irishman to acknowledge his challenge publicly. This is why Khabib's guys had their cameras ready and were the first to post video of the incident on social media. Thursday, April 5th was the media day press conference for UFC 223. It's also the morning Conor McGregor flew into New York City with a loose plan of interrupting the presser and generating the requisite media and public groundswell to achieve leverage over the UFC, get a new contract, and return to the octagon. For this, McGregor sought a confrontation with Khabib. Unfortunately, McGregor was late. By the time he arrived, the press conference was over. Conor was forced to adapt, but the goal remained the same, confront Khabib. The scene escalates quickly, but Connor's obvious intent is to answer Khabib's challenge face to face, man to man, not smash a bus. That's why it starts with Connor shouting Khabib's name, calling him out, as men have done with their rivals for centuries. Connor finds the bus with Khabib on it, but after pounding on windows and calling him out, McGregor finally realizes that Khabib has refused to leave the bus. I think McGregor bought into the legend of Khabib a little bit. The whole, this guy's from some crazy mountain region where they wrestle bears and have no fear. I don't believe it ever crossed Connor's mind that Khabib would shrink from a direct public challenge like this. He becomes incensed by the breach of honor, but even smashing out the bus window doesn't produce a response from Khabib. In the end, McGregor failed to get the man-to-man -man confrontation with Khabib that he needed. As a result, when Holloway dropped out the next day, Connor was being arraigned in a courtroom. Instead of being able to step in to defend his lightweight champion, Championship against Khabib, the number two ranked challenger. This is Conor McGregor being taken from the police station to the courthouse on Friday morning after the bus melee. Here he is at the arraignment. Look at him. What do you notice? McGregor is extremely lean. You can see the dark lines and deep hollows of his face. The only time we see McGregor look like this is when he's cutting weight. Bingo. The crazy bastard was absolutely planning to step on the scale Friday and defend his belt in the main event on Saturday. Why else would he so obviously be cutting weight? Well, that's what I see. This was never about Artem. It was about Connor negotiating a new contract with UFC, and as a bonus, stepping into a last-minute title fight against an opponent he'd prepared for, all while doing virtually no media. Like so many other times in Conor McGregor's career, all the pieces nearly fell into place just as he had envisioned. If McGregor gets to the Barclays Center 15 minutes sooner, he likely finds Khabib on stage at the presser instead of ensconced within a bus. He'd use a microphone to launch a few verbal barbs instead of a hand truck through a bus window as an invitation to dance. You're looking at the king. You're looking at the king. But still, it's hard to imagine the fight of the century going down on about a day's notice. Remember. This isn't supposed to be easy.